2020 will go down in history as the year of the coronavirus pandemic, but it will also go down in history as the year of some new competition in the sports sedan segment, the compact one. Last month, I showed you guys the completely redesigned Acura TLX. Today, Lexus has taken the wraps off of the all new 2021 Lexus IS. Now, obviously I would usually be at an auto show giving you guys this kind of coverage, but because of the ongoing pandemic, I'm here from my office slash studio just outside the DC area. So let's take a first look. Now the Lexus IS has had a very long history in the Lexus lineup, first coming to America back in 2001 as the Toyota Altezza. It was a rebadged version of that car. And over the years, Lexus has obviously made some changes to the IS. The current generation debuted back in 2014, so it is significantly due for a complete redesign. So now that we're finally laying our eyes on the all new version of this car, the look on the outside certainly looks all new, but also looks distinctively like a Lexus. I actually really like the new front fascia on this car. It has the Lexus corporate spindle grille. You've got this new skinnier, sleeker looking headlight where the previous generation model, which had the LED running lights divorced from the actual headlight module has been replaced with just a single looking headlight. It's a much slimmer, much sleeker, much modern look to the vehicle. This particular one that they're showing off is a silver IS350 in the F Sport Sport package. Now, as you can see, the IS definitely looks new on the outside in the front fascia, but this is actually riding on a modified version of the existing platform. You could say that Lexus actually kind of took an easier route with the full redesign. Unlike the new TLX, this is riding on a modified platform. It's not the all new, you know, TNGA luxury platform that we find on the Lexus LS. Lexus said that that platform wasn't able to compress into a mid-size to compact sports sedan. So instead we're just kind of getting a an updated version of this platform. Now looking around the side profile, you might notice that the IS looks still pretty tidy and that's because they've kept the overall length relatively the same. It's actually only about 1.2 inches longer overall at around 185 inches long. It's also 1.2 inches lower. Its wheelbase remains the same at around 110 inches long. So this is going to compete head on with vehicles like the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class, Genesis G70, Audi A4, Acura TLX, Infiniti Q50, this is a segment that's been shrinking because everybody wants a sport utility vehicle. So I can kind of see why Lexus didn't want to spend the big bucks on an all new platform, but it also kind of disappoints me. At least the IS is still, of course, a rear drive based car and you can clearly see that in the proportions. Now with this new generation model, Lexus did increase the wheel size and they also improved the handling they're saying. So um, the wheels are now standard 18 inch wheels. There's also an available 19 inch wheel. And if you guys go for a new performance package or a handling package that you can get with the F Sport package, it'll include things like a limited slip differential if you get the rear drive model and uh, the tire sizes go up to a 265 width rear tire. So that's actually one of the fattest tires you can get in this segment if you don't include things like the M3 or the Audi RS5 or the Mercedes C63. Now at back, I think Lexus has done a really good job with changing the rear taillight design. This is the image that they first teased us with a couple of weeks ago. And I really like how they kind of inverted the taillight design. The previous generation had that really strange droop where the taillights kind of extended into the rear quarter panel, which I never warmed up to that look. Now the droop has been inverted and it's been flipped upward. You have this signature LED light pipe that goes the entire length of the, the actual trunk lid and it connects the two taillight modules together, together and you get full LED taillights. You get a tasteful dual integrated dual uh, exhaust tip with chrome outlets. So it's overall a nice look on the outside. Obviously, you know, Lexus kind of played it safe here. I mean, compared to things like the Genesis G70 or the new Acura TLX, this is distinctively Lexus, but you have to wonder, did Lexus do enough to make this car stand out, especially with all the new competition that'll be coming out later this year. Now underneath the new hood of the 2021 Lexus IS, this is where a lot of you, including myself, are going to be pretty disappointed because there were rumors floating around of an IS 500 model that would be equipped with the five liter V8 from the Lexus GSF or the RCF. Unfortunately, 
That was not confirmed according to the press release uh, that Toyota or Lexus just announced for this car. The powertrains are all carryover. That's right. The lineup will continue as the IS300, which has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with around 241 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque going out through an eight speed automatic. That is only rear drive. If you guys go for an IS300 with all wheel drive, that four cylinder turbo is replaced with a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 that's detuned to 260 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. Here's the kicker. The all wheel drive models still continue to use a six speed automatic. A six-speed automatic was a really good amount of gears about 10 years ago. And in a Lexus IS where everyone's going to eight 10-speed transmissions, this is really, really disappointing to hear from Lexus. Now, if you guys go for the rear drive models, you will get an eight-speed auto. And if you guys want the most powerful IS, it's still gonna be the IS350 with its 3.5 liter V6 with 311 horsepower and around 266 foot-pounds of torque. It's a naturally aspirated engine. Those numbers were fine back in 2014 but come on Lexus, the competition has moved on to boosted six cylinders. Acura just showed off the TLX Type S with a three five or with a three liter turbocharged V6. We've got Audi S4, BMW M340i, and of course Mercedes AMG C43, and not to mention that Genesis G70 3.3T. So if Lexus wants to be taken seriously against the Germans, they should have put the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 from the Lexus LS500. My guess is that engine wouldn't fit because it rides on a different platform, that uh, TNGA luxury platform, which the new IS unfortunately does not ride on. Now moving on to the interior of the 2021 Lexus IS, unfortunately the inside didn't quite get the extensive changes that you see on the outside. Actually when I first saw the interior photos of this car I was pretty disappointed because aside from the new airbag cover on the steering wheel, the new circular vents on the side of the dash, and the new infotainment system, it is basically a direct carryover of the previous generation IS, which was a fine interior back then. However, today it is very cramped, the design looks very old, although I applaud Lexus for adding some modern tech features. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is that new floating tablet screen. It's a 10.3 inch display that is optional, an eight inch touchscreen will be standard. That's right, I said it's a touchscreen because Lexus has finally added a touchscreen to a lot of their newest models, including the Lexus RX. They've positioned the screen to be about three inches closer to the driver, so you can actually touch it with your hand, or you can use the trackpad that's in the center stack over there, which replaces that mouse-like controller, which nobody really liked. The rest of the cabin, as you can see, I mean, you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay now and Amazon Alexa, which is great. Um, but the gauges are practically the same. The seats are the same. Of course, you can still get that circuit red leather. The, the shifter is still that same gated shifter, whereas everyone else has gone to an electronic shifter. Some of you traditionalists may prefer that, of course. You even have the same kind of controls for the climate controls with those touch sensitive sliders. The display for the actual temperature looks like it came from Radio Shack. So I'm very overall disappointed. Now I'm going to assume the interior materials are gonna be solid. Lexus does a really, really good job there. They also have pretty comfortable seats. But the current generation IS for me always felt cramped and I always hated how the all wheel drive models had that weird hump uh, on the uh, center tunnel, which kind of uh, intrudes on your foot space. For me, every time I sat in that car, that hump would always uh, hit me right in the calf, and it was kind of an annoying experience. So again, you'll have to wait and see, or at least I'll have to wait and see until I actually sit in this car to see if Lexus had addressed some of those issues. On the safety front, Lexus did improve their Lexus Safety System 2.0. It's now Lexus Safety System 2.5, so you have things like automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure uh, warning, pedestrian detection, blind spot monitoring. That is all standard. What it did add is lane trace control and it also will follow the cars in front of you in stop and go traffic in a much more uh, advanced manner. So of course they did improve of uh, those features there. Uh, you still cannot get a panoramic sunroof on this car, but you will find features like uh, heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel, memory seats with like up to 14 way adjustability and the Mark Levinson sound system has been upgraded from 15 to 17 speakers. Now, of course, the Lexus IS is a pretty low volume car for Lexus. Last year, the company only managed to sell around 14,900 units here in America. That is pretty paltry compared to the top that they used to hit back in 2014, where they sold around 52,000 ISs. That kind of shows how everyone's moved to uh, crossovers over sedans. But when you compare it to the Japanese rivals, the TLX last year sold around 26,000 units. Infinity was right behind with the Q50 at around 25,000 units. Even the Genesis G70, or Genesis 
has a problem with their dealer network, managed to sell just under 12,000 units of the G70. So as you can see, Lexus has a problem with the current IS. It's not selling very well, so this new version should help, but my fear is it doesn't have quite enough power especially for enthusiasts out there with what you can get in today's market. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2021 Lexus IS. It will be going on sale later this year in the fall, but if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.